It's finally here, the Alpine ILX 507. It's actually their first uh, double DIN head unit that features a high definition uh, display in the wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So I'm excited to see what this unit offers. So let's start with the unboxing. Inside the box we'll find uh, a bunch of uh, wires and a little frame there. So here's everything that it comes with. When I first heard about uh, this model, I was excited to see a couple of interesting features like HDMI ports, and the ability to connect it to a dash cam, it needs to be an Alpine dash cam by the way, and ability to connect the iData Link Maestro. And it's out of the box now, and let's make some space here, we don't need those uh, wires right now, and we probably don't need this cover, so here it is, uh, ILX507. 7-inch digital media receiver doesn't play CDs or DVDs as you can see it looks like a single DIN uh, chassis but it's not it's a double DIN in the back here we'll uh, having the HDMI ports that I was talking about uh, in and out so input and output you can output some stuff a double um, a double USB connection looks like one is for the Apple CarPlay and one is just for the charging 2.1 amps for the charging the other two wire harnesses is just the Sirius XM antenna and car antenna this is a closer uh, look at the face of the unit and on the bottom we have those buttons uh, sticking out a little bit in the photos before I actually saw this unit in person I thought they're gonna uh, stick out a little bit more but it's really not that bad the middle two buttons have a nice a blue accent and a chrome trim around them this is an alpine thing i've seen this on uh, older uh, units as well uh, buttons are having a shiny finish as you can see and uh, one thing that i've noticed um, the bezels are equal on each side so on other units i'm seeing i tend to see the bezel on the right side being wider than uh, the left one i'm not sure why that's a trend but as you can see a lot of them have the same issue uh, in this case uh, this gives a more uh, symmetrical feel so uh, it's a nice touch and now it's time for the boot time test and if you watch my channel uh, you know i like to do boot test uh, time on those uh, head units and as you can see just uh, around eight seconds and I'm surprised I haven't seen the uh, disclaimer or pop-up message so that's really nice uh, uh, feature to not have to press ok or agree and here we have uh, Apple CarPlay automatically uh, connected uh, wirelessly so it remembers the uh, previous phone that was paired with this unit it will automatically start after another eight seconds so total of uh, 16 seconds and you have Apple CarPlay uh, up on the screen and same thing applies for Android Auto, so I hope uh, the Android uh, users are not getting offended here because I keep mentioning Apple CarPlay, but that's the same for Android Auto. Anyway, this is the uh, radio app. Um, pretty minimal looking. Uh, you have on the left side a bunch of uh, presets with frequency lists that you can uh, choose. You can switch between FM and AM from the top uh, right corner. Uh, pretty basic uh, radio stuff, uh, nothing really interesting here. And that's how the uh, main uh, screen looks like where you can navigate through uh, different apps. The icons are pretty well uh, proportioned. Uh, they look nice, I would say. It's a pleasant uh, user interface, I would say, compared with other head units. Um, I li really like this one. So there is another uh, feature, which is the HDMI. So basically what I've done here, I uh, plugged in my uh, Amazon Fire Stick 4K uh, into the uh, input HDMI port and here I have uh, Amazon Fire TV working of course you gotta plug it to a, a power source for the Android stick but uh, hey this should uh, leave us uh, a lot of uh, creativity with those uh, HDMI ports you can this is just an example of what you can do with the uh, HDMI port so I'm gonna try to play a, a video or some uh, channels here to see if how it will look on the screen and um, hopefully it will there we go we have a live news going on on the head unit no hacking needed it's just you gotta have one of those uh, hdmi android sticks and i'm pretty sure it will work so that's really a cool feature you can probably uh, use a chromecast or something like that and even stream a youtuber uh, to the uh, uh, this unit so that's pretty cool all right, so we're moving on uh, next uh, to the uh, buttons here. We have uh, the 
volume up and uh, down volume this is how the uh, uh, interface looks when you press those buttons it's not really intrusive it's pretty well proportioned it looks pretty nice um, and uh, switching gears now to uh, Apple CarPlay, it's uh, wirelessly connected, so I'm gonna do some kind of screen uh, lag test, and it's not that bad considering uh, the fact that it's uh, a wireless connection. There is just a little bit of a uh, uh, delay, but nothing huge. Uh, there is room for uh, for better, for improvement, but really, it's manageable. You can uh, browse the maps and and. Uh, the, the, actually, the uh, sometimes the FPS of the screen they just it just feels pretty smooth. Like when you enter an address or something, you it really uh, um, doesn't uh, struggle to uh, move the the image. So I'm uh, I'm happy with it. On the USB uh, connection, it will be a little bit faster. Not much difference, but if you are really picky, uh, you can see a difference. The uh, microphone button will uh, trigger uh, Siri. And same goes for Android 2, it'll trigger the Google Assistant or whatever uh, it's uh, using. The cam button, it's not, uh, it's unavailable, uh, but it can be activated from the settings. So if you don't have a cam, a camera attached, uh, you can uh, deactivate it. Skip uh, track buttons, uh, will just basically skip the tracks. And pressing the nav button will uh, switch the screen to the uh, previously used uh, nav app. Now there is a cool uh, little feature on the main screen here in the bottom left corner you have a little bit uh, of a window of, that's the source of uh, of uh, what is playing in the background basically you can see a small preview there if it's a song or if you are on HDMI you can see if I'm switching back you can still see an image of what's going on in the background so I really like that feature now we will uh, go through uh, the uh, settings and do a walkthrough there. You can only access the settings if uh, your uh, parking brake is engaged. Of course, you have to connect this uh, head unit to the parking brake wire or you can use a parking bypass. So you can use the settings while driving as well. The settings menu is split into three sections. Uh, first, it's uh, regarding devices. All uh, the devices that are uh, being connected to this unit will uh, show up in uh, this uh, list. You can delete them or disconnect them. There is a Wi-Fi as well. You can uh, set a password there or turn it off. Bluetooth connection, basic, uh, basic uh, stuff for uh, Bluetooth uh, settings. Nothing uh, fancy going on here. And device info. It just shows a bunch of. Uh, information about uh, this um, unit network so going to the function we have apple carplay you can set different uh, values for the volume for example if you don't really like the noti notification or uh, guidance for the maps you can uh, turn that down if you like the phone calls a little higher uh, you can uh, turn that up and so on and as you can see same goes for the android auto on the radio section uh, we have a uh, volume adjust and a bunch of uh, other uh, options there. Sirius XM, just the volume adjust. <clears throat> Seems like this uh, section here is just about uh, the uh, volume adjusting and small uh, uh, tweak settings for uh, for the volume. So what's uh, interesting here, it's uh, the HDMI that you can uh, actually change the, the image, uh, the brightness and the contrast, the color that you can uh, uh, tweak a little bit if you don't like the way it uh, it uh, shows up there. So that's pretty cool. And with the HDMI selector, you have the options to uh, switch between HDMI 1 and HDMI 2. A Bluetooth connection, you have some basic uh, stuff there going on, factory audio, uh, I, I guess this is for uh, integrating the uh, OEM uh, Sirius XM uh, antenna and uh, volume adjustment for uh, for that. Then we have the uh, dash cam. That's only if you uh, connect and pair the uh, Alpine dash cam with it. Now for the camera setup, I was uh, as I was uh, mentioning that uh, switch on top there will. Uh, activate the camera button if you turn it off it will deactivate the button because it's no point to uh, uh, as you can see it's no point to have a uh, non-functional feature if you uh, press the button so uh, there is a few uh, camera setups you can set uh, for a front side or other camera now switching back to system uh, microphone and noise reduction you have three, three levels if you feel like it's uh, too noisy when you talk to someone over uh, the uh, phone 
in the clock adjustment basic settings for uh, that as well we will uh, go to home screen type so basically uh normal it's right now but um this is the normal one what we've seen before but we're gonna switch to enhance text so basically that will uh, um uh, in, i guess it will make the uh, icons look bigger on the screen if if that's more convenient for you what i was uh, i'm trying to see if i can uh, uh, rearrange those you can really uh, uh, rearrange those from here, but you can do from uh, the setting. We'll uh, see here in a second. So we'll switch it back to the normal. I, I prefer that uh, better. Screen lighting, you have the dimmer. And um, I can say that the dimmer has 15 levels of adjustment. Actually, maybe 30 because it goes uh, minus 15 and plus 15. And that's automatically uh, sensed by the uh, light sensor that is located next to the microphone button, that little square there. So you don't have to really uh, wire a dimmer uh, wire uh, into your car. Now, the screen here, uh, screen color, I would call it a wallpaper, not a screen color. That's a little bit confusing. And now this is the setting where you can uh, arrange those uh, uh, source or apps on the screen. You can uh, set the order by pressing the arrow and that will move it up and closer to the first page. Vehicle types for phone link. This is new to me. I haven't seen this on any other head units yet, uh, but uh, looks like it's a requirement for Apple CarPlay and uh, Android Auto to actually know what kind of car you're driving and the fuel type. I'm not sure why. Maybe in the future they will implement a, a feature where it will uh, show you what um, charging station are available, I guess, but I'm not seeing uh, this unit being installed on uh, Tesla actually any new electric car they already come with carplay no one is gonna replace the head unit with uh an aftermarket one and this installation status is pretty cool it will actually tell you uh, if you hooked up the things uh, properly in the car so it's basically like a checklist make sure you check that before you uh, complete your uh, install that's a pretty cool feature to have now another very important uh, thing about the software they usually come with a lower software than 1.1 and 250 make sure you have at least this uh, version the previous uh, versions they had some issues with apple carplay uh, connectivity so make sure you update that I'm gonna have a link in the video description on how to uh, update this head unit. So uh, um, this is it for the uh, uh, settings or the setup screen. Now let's go to the uh, sound uh, setup here. You can access that by tapping the top blue uh, thing on the main screen or there is another way to access just uh, tap and uh, hold that uh, uh, main, uh, main menu button and it will uh, show up. This is a new... Uh, uh, interface for Alpine they uh, have this uh, cool uh, sound uh, dashboard it's new to Alpine they just uh, introduced this with their new lines of uh, head units um, let's uh, go to a fader and balance here and uh, just basic stuff like any other head units you can uh, adjust uh, fader and uh, the uh, balance equalizer setting uh, looks um, interesting to me uh, it could be a little bit uh, confusing because you can't really, uh, uh, looks like you can't really adjust the uh, equalizer like I thought just by uh, uh, going on those uh, uh, graph and adjust the frequencies and it seems like that's not the way to uh, adjust it but uh, I guess switching back to a, a basic equalizer this will give us a bunch of uh, presets anyway uh, going uh, to a crossover and uh, here we have a bunch of options actually quite uh, advanced uh, sound tweaks i would call them so we can see the uh, alpine really stepped up the game and really got very serious into uh, into a sound adjustment now this is a time uh, correction or time alignment whatever you want to call you are able to uh, set, an, uh, set that as well and a uh, bass engine you got a few uh, uh, different uh, levels here that you can set up looks like goes up to six and there is a standard uh, i'm sure it can be switched let's see what's the best way to uh, switch it okay so you can uh, turn media expander if you have a bass engine so 
uh, on so as you can see tapping uh, the uh, bass engine will uh, uh, switch between uh, different bass effects that this unit comes uh, with media expander has uh, three levels and you are probably wondering what this does uh, looks like this makes the vocals or instruments uh, sound distinct regardless of the music source the radio fm uh, or usb flash drive and ipod will be able to reproduce uh, music clearly even in cars with a lot of road noise so that's a cool uh, interesting effect coming from a uh, alpine that uh, center gauge there it shows the battery voltage so you can keep an eye on it while uh, uh, adjusting the bass or uh, doing some uh, kind of sound tweaks like increasing the volume you can keep an eye and make sure that uh, the battery is not gonna die on you if you go too crazy of course so this is it guys this uh, that's all uh, for uh, this uh, ILX 507 I hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video uh, click like and subscribe for more uh, similar content I will see you in the next video